and gentlemen, welcome to True Cell Teaches, where in this episode, we're going to be talking about the fun part of debate, where you, as a policy debater, get to talk about, say, people getting nuked off the face of the earth, or terrorists blowing up major cities with nuclear bombs, or biodiversity collapsing and killing everyone. Basically, this is the Everyone Dies episode. Now, in most examples of policy debate, the decision gets, um, the decision is uh, made based upon whether or not the affirmative plan should be passed or not. Now, how the affirmative negative team debate this is largely due, or is largely done by deciding what the impacts of the affirmative plan would be. Now, what the affirmative team wants to do is prove the impacts which would be good, that the affirmative plan would do good things when it's passed, and the negative team wants to prove that the impacts of the affirmative team of uh, the affirmative plan would be bad once they are passed. Now, impacts, as I've seen throughout my several years of policy debate, tend to fall in three categories. First off is economy. Now, there are actually really only a few scenarios that actually lead to an economic impact. For instance, um, the affirmative plan on the affirmative side, for instance, would say, well, we prop up a certain industry or we create jobs and that helps the United States economy. Now, what an economic impact usually leads to is a uh, war. For instance, the affirmative plan would say, we create jobs, we prop up the economy. However, the economy is bad now, so if we don't prop up the economy, if we don't pass the affirmative plan, then the economy is going to collapse. Then they'll generally read some card that says the United States is key to the entire global economy. Without the United States' economy being good, the global economy falls down with us. And then the card that they'll read after this is generally the direction that all economic impacts go, which is war. And what they'll say there is that the weaker parts of the world will generally start falling into war as they need to uh, prop up the countries, as they need to basically survive in these economic scenarios. Um, however, on the negative side, there's actually quite a large number of ways that the negative can also achieve economic impacts. They'll say, for instance, uh, the most common version of this would be a spending disadvantage, which is essentially where the negative says that the affirmative team spends money and that is bad. Um, basically, what they're going to say is that when the government starts spending massive amounts of money on the affirmative plan, that's going to make the government look fiscally irresponsible, which is going to make investors, basically the people who give money to the government in hopes of making their money back, would not give that money to the government, and the government would start collapsing, and the economy would start collapsing, and you see all sorts of bad things happen there. Um, a certain branch on an economic impact on the negative side would be a credit downgrade, where the affirmative plan makes the government look like it's irresponsible, which causes consumers, which causes credit industries or credit firms to see the government as being something so fiscally irresponsible that they don't want to invest money in it at all, which is going to result in something called a credit downgrade. What a credit downgrade is, is when, government, when um, credit firms essentially say that the government is not worth investing your money in because you will not make your money back, which means that you will end up getting basically um, your rank, the country's rank, downgraded to the point where it basically represents the fact that the country is not worthy of investing money in. For instance, the United States right now, I believe, has a AAA rating on the Moody's rank. However, if we were to say, look, suddenly start looking like a country that was fiscally irresponsible, we'd start getting downgraded to a AA plus and lower and lower. Venezuela, one of the actually worst countries in the world right now, actually has a triple C credit rating. Basically, it's something you don't want to happen. Next one that we tend to see is the environmental impact. And environmental impacts often just take many different forms. For instance, on the affirmative side, um, one of the most common plans that we heard this year, here in good old 2014, is um, biodiversity is being lost. Now what biodiversity is, is basically how many different kinds of species exist in a certain area. And the theory behind this is that if one species in an area dies off, then other species that are dependent on it will start either dying off because they aren't able to eat that other species, or will start propagating incredibly because they aren't being eaten. This hurts causes other species to start dying. Basically you see this whole, whole scale collapse. Now, one of the more interesting impacts that you see from there tends to be biodiversity loss equals extinction, which is basically saying once we lose enough species, it'll start cascading into other species that we actually use. Like if you kill one form of little minnow thing in shallow ocean, eventually you're going to get to the point where you start killing tuna, 
and if we don't get tuna, if we don't get food fish, then people start dying. So basically what the Fern Plan wants to do is preserve biodiversity via some you know, of saving an animal or creating habitats, certain things like that. Also, another thing in the front of the plan will do is say we try to mitigate or we try to stop or predict storms. This year, um, storms were actually pretty major. We had heard things like a front of the plan saying we're going to build up walls uh, or coral reefs, which would stop hurricanes well from racing into major cities. For example, in, Contri in Louisiana, New Orleans got wiped out by Hurricane Katrina because all their levees broke down. Basically, further plans want to stop things like that from happening, or they'll increase weather forecasting, which is basically saying we'll help people be able to escape from the storms before the storms actually happen. <coughs> Another variety on environmental impact is one that has been fairly common as well, which is the disease impact. Back here in the past of 2014, we actually had um, this a little bit of an academic epidemic happening in West Africa called Ebola, which actually had people quite afraid. And on the negative side, there are actually impacts saying that the affirmative plan takes resources away from the fight against Ebola, which allows Ebola to spread all throughout West Africa, causing a pandemic which kills millions and millions of people. So basically, environmental impacts are among the most widespread impacts that you can see. And environmental impacts can also cascade over into an, uh, an economic impact. For instance, when an affirmative team or negative team can get up and say, we turn your environment or economic impact because without the environment, we cannot have a good economy because biodiversity loss means we don't get fish or food or whatever, and that tends to be bad. Also, finally, the final category that I've seen so far is the war impact, really the most fun impact, because it's the one where you get to talk about uh, the United States getting into a war with China and everybody getting nuked off the face of the planet. However, war impacts tend to come in a more simple, simpler, um, smaller number of scenarios. Like one of the more common ones is deterrence, where we need to build up the entire United States military so that the United States looks like a tough country so other countries won't want to screw with us. Like, for instance, if Russia was looking to annex another part of Ukraine, we could stop that from happening by suddenly beefing up our military and making Russia think twice about that. This also feeds into a different variety of that called hegemony. Now, what he hegemony is, is basically how strong a country appears to be. And there's all sorts of impacts that hegemony can basically spin off to. Like, laws of hegemony can spin off into, we lose deterrence, we lose the ability to work with other countries, other countries don't value the United States as an ally, and that can lead to all sorts of bad things. Or, you can say that increasing hegemony is bad because that makes people afraid of the United States, that makes people unwilling to work with us. That really does all sorts of really bad things to the United States as a whole. So hegemony can spin both ways. Generally, they do tend to be result in war impacts. Like terrorists, terrorists will either attack us because we appear to be too strong or they will not attack us because they're afraid of us because we appear to be too strong and other things like that. Now, another uh, variety on this would be the relations disadvantage, which is essentially, we need to build up our relations with a certain country. Generally, it tends to be an important country like China or Russia, or actually, my sophomore year, Brazil was in there, which, and the thesis behind this disadvantage is essentially saying, we need to have strong relations with X country in order for us to be able to work with X country to resolve a certain crisis. For instance, our relations with China need to be high, <coughs> excuse me, so we can end up going ahead, working with China to try and defuse the situation in North Korea. And the impacts behind relations disadvantages do tend to be war-based. Some relations disadvantages will actually say if you hurt relations enough with X country, the next country will go to war with us. And we really do not want to end up going to war with someone like China or Russia, because that would be bad. So really, what impacts can do is basically outweigh each other. What's worse, um, a couple of animals are dying or a nuclear war? What's worse, you make some jobs or total extinction of the entire human race, so millions of people dying? Basically, what happens there is you do, at the end, this thing called impact count, where you weigh your impacts on three things. Time frame, how soon they'll happen. Probability, how likely they are to happen. And magnitude, how big they are. And if you lend two or basically really the majority of those then you'll most likely win the round because you have proven that your side is the one that hurts the least number of people thank you and those